Hi guys, and uh, welcome aboard the Starrat. Uh, this is a, a German ship that uh, first set sail in 1904. It's a sailing ship, also has light power on it. Um, as it is, Ludwig is the ship captain. Um, so in my previous uh, uh, ride day, there's Ona, uh, one, of, one of the uh, guys traveling. Um, in the previous ride day, I spoke about how, how, we, how we got there, how we organized it. And on this, on the blog post, if you go to the, my website, you'll see all the information, the costs, a breakdown of what you've got to do to get, uh, get on there. But the first thing I would suggest is going to their website and, and having a look at the schedule and then looking at your schedule and, and you're going to have to try and match their schedule. You've got a couple of options to get across the Darien Gap and the Darien Gap goes from uh, from um, from uh, the, the Darien Gap is somewhere you can't cross by road. One person did it with a massive crew with a motorbike years and years ago but really didn't do it. I mean if, if you need a whole heap of people helping you carry motorbikes because there's no roads. So this is, the, this is the, the main option you get a ship. It doesn't have to be the Star Route, but this is the most popular one. And then you also can get, um, you can also, um, I'll put this video on twice, so I didn't have many videos. Um, you can also catch a plane to Medellin or Bogota, I think. So this is where we stopped. This is our first stop after a couple of hours of sailing. We stopped at the San Blas Islands and went for a swim. Uh, I was first in because I'm a hero um, and you, you can use the kayaks, paddle boards, you know, some people just got the little dinghy. There was a person getting married, that was our dinner for the first night. Some locals brought about 50 crayfish onto the board, live crayfish, and they, they killed them all on the spot. Lovely. And uh, we had a little, uh, little bit of a, I'm not sure, I thought, I wrote that it was a curry, I thought it was a curry with rice, with that lobster, it was freaking amazing. Um, and then basically we settled in for the night. Um, so basically what happens is the bikes go on the boat, the boat goes out to sea, uh, and then basically all your luggage gets put onto one boat, one little uh, dinghy taken out there, and then, and then they come back and get you. You get onto the boat, uh, you get all your gear organized downstairs where all the bunks are. It's pretty cramped down there and pretty stuffy and humid. Um, and like the second night, I decided to sleep up on the deck. Uh, um, a couple of the guys got seasick. I haven't been seasick for a long time. I don't know why I don't get seasick, but I just don't. Uh, but they decided to spend the next day, the, the second day downstairs, which was a pretty dumb move. <laughs> um, if you ever get seasick, the only way you can get rid of it is to get up there, get the fresh air and look out the horizon. Um, and if you do get seasick, make sure you take tablets, you know. Um, there's Klaus, uh, German, he's a super, super bike rider, German super bike rider. He was the guy I was telling you about in the previous episode, who just, uh, he was the guy who knew how to get there and everyone followed him and he was going 100 mile an hour the whole way. <laughs> he was a pretty funny guy. Um, yeah, so uh, once you get on the boat, you get your gear organised, you get your bunks organised, they put all the, all your uh, luggage from your bike, it goes into these little rooms, and then you just put what you need on your bunk bed. And then upstairs for a, a briefing, um, a few people got a little bit put off by it because there's a lot of rules, but I just sort of like just rolled with it, I didn't really care, I made a couple of jokes, weren't really that funny anyway, but uh, you weren't allowed to pee off the top deck, that was one of the rules. And just about the toilet, about cleaning up after you, about the roster for clean, uh, for doing the dishes, um, yeah. So, so uh, we're going to get pretty quickly. You can see here we're already in Cartagena. So the first, the first night, um, this is the second night we got there. So this trip normally it's three or four, maybe even five days, uh, and you just stop it off for all these different islands and have all this adventure. But the, our trip was basically just for all the motorbikes, because a lot of motorbikes going to be stranded. Uh, so they decided there's some fireworks going off in the background there um, in Cartagena. So by the second night, we had a huge tailwind. And so by the second night, we were actually in Cartagena, but we couldn't we couldn't dock. We had to wait out, and, out, out to sea. Um, and I, I ended up sleeping on the deck the second night. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so we basically got there 
very, very late the second night and then the next morning we uh, we docked but unfortunately uh, the guy who that's the that's the view we had in the morning it was beautiful uh, beautiful day uh, but what happened was the guy who was doing all our import documentation in Cartagena had died the night before which is pretty sad he was fairly old and a bit of, had been cooked for a while but yeah he died and so basically we had to wait an extra day before we could get our bikes off they dropped us off and as you can see here all the guys are heading straight to the bank to get some cash and that's where we stayed. I stayed at an Airbnb, a really nice little hotel, a little bit, little bit uh, sterile, but it was pretty cool. And so then the following day, we had to come get back on the boat and pick up our motorbikes. And then, as you can see, this is us. Uh, these guys are already on the boat. Um, oh, actually, this was actually leave, this was actually leaving the first time around. There's Marcus. There's uh, Russell, and I think Chris was there as well. Um, there's some of the guys we met on the way, ended up running into a couple of them uh, in the, in the, on the trip down south. So this is us leaving the boat to go to shore and then the next day we were going to, uh, so we just took what we needed for the night and the next day we were going to uh, get back on, um, get back on the, the boat and then drive out to get our bikes. There's Klaus with, uh, with his motorbike, I think he had a GS1200 or GS800, I can't really remember. A um, lot of different variety of bikes. There's my baby, Tani, all strapped up, uh, ready to go. Some of the guys just doing some reading on the boat. So yeah, so this is the next day where we, we, we go to this sort of bit of an industrial area to offload our bikes. Um, and then we we're basically on our way. Um, we all rode together into, the, into Cartagena, as you can see. All the bikes going together. There's Chris on the right there. We ended up hanging out a fair bit, Chris and I. Um, we did uh, the death road together and we also did uni salt flats. Um, and we also caught up again in uh, Santiago in, uh, in, in Chile. Um, but then we went our separate ways again. Um, I was sort of a bit more on of a timeline with it than him. He's now in Morocco in Africa. Um, but yeah, we, we all we all rode in. It was pretty. It was pretty good feeling actually getting to another continent. So it's like another another part of your journey. You know, you're you're basically. I've gone from Miami all the way across to LA, which I consider one part of the journey. There's Six thousand miles or whatever that was, four thousand miles, and then from uh, from there down to uh, down through Baja. California, Mexico, and then across all the way across Mexico, which I considered my second leg, and then from um, from Belize all the way through Central America to Panama, which I consider the third leg. And so the final leg was going to be all of South America, which is a huge continent. Um, uh, so there's a lot of motorbikes, pretty crazy riding in um, in Cartagena. Everybody's like so many motorbikes. They even banned motorbikes from certain areas of the city, which is a pain for us, which we didn't find out until we got pulled over by the police uh, that we weren't allowed to ride. We didn't even notice that there weren't any bikes. You weren't allowed to ride the bikes in the old town. And um, I think there's even days in Cartagena where you're not allowed to ride motorbikes at all. So, So this is where we left everyone. I don't know why everyone went here. Some sort of cafe and, and wash. Uh, maybe some of the guys thought they needed to wash their bikes because we've been in the um, um, out in the ocean and stuff like that. But they were undercover. Like mine was really covered, so I didn't think it was necessary. So we said goodbye to everybody. Uh, we, we everyone we had all their email addresses and people on uh, social media. Sam, the big tall guy there from UK, and that's Eric. Eric's from the US. He's now Eric is in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, so we got back on our bikes and uh, and went to. You can see that stick there. I use that for my 360 camera. So we got going again and got to the hotel and uh, got got our gear and and we actually pretty much went straight to the swimming pool after that. After once uh, I'd already booked a hotel, and the guys said I, I said they could they'll find it. It was an Airbnb. I said they could stay a night or two uh, there. Um, 
Well, I don't think they stayed maybe two or three nights total. And um, yeah, it was a decent apartment. We had secure parking. For the bikes, the owners were really good of the, uh, the Airbnb. Internet was so-so. It wasn't bad though, it wasn't terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, so we all, we all headed headed towards uh, the, uh, the hotel. So Cartagena is like a, it's a pretty big city, uh, but it's very you know you've got the new new area where the sort of people well to do live, and then you've got all the pretty pretty uh, old old areas with a little bit not really slums, but they're like all the roads are not taken care of and all that sort of stuff, and there's a lot of water and junk on the roads and stuff. Uh, it's good. Though. It's a good place. Though. I've been to Cartagena a few times. Um, always need to get your bearings when you get there again, though. But we stayed along the water. You can see all the motorbikes there on the left. The old town here is on the left-hand side as we're coming up. So you can see the walls of the old town. It's a beautiful old town. It's absolutely sensational. Uh, one of the one of the better old cities in the world. Um, so yeah, well, I think we, we we stayed here for about uh, I stayed I stayed here for for a few weeks. So I, I now had to get my bike in. I'd already put the uh, inflated the tire. I was already going down already as I'm riding back here. Um, but uh, I had to go and get my get my bike serviced, and and that ended up taking it. They ended up having my bike for about eight days. I think we were getting lost here. I, actually, actually, I was waiting for the guys. Don't know what happened to it. Okay, I've seen one of them. I actually, I, I have to go back around. Oh no, I had to go back. I think I, I think I lost Sam or can't remember if it was Sam or or um, got left behind. So I went looking for him. I think I found him. I don't think it took, took me too long to find him. Just trying to work out how to get back around again. Actually, trying to work out how to get across the road. Drive up the wrong side of the road, jack in there. Anything goes here in, in uh in Colombia. So yeah, the um with the fee for the Star Wrap, you you it's twelve hundred dollars. Um you've got to pay also twenty and um twenty dollars and three dollars to get into the indigenous area uh, on, on the Panama side. $1,200 and that basically gets you all your accommodation. It, they organize all the import, uh, so getting you out, getting your bike out of Panama and your passport stamped out and also uh, your bike in and a passport into Columbia. So it's, it takes away all the hassles. Uh, now $1,200, okay, normally it's like a four or five night cruise. You, you could probably say it's pretty expensive, um, but at the same time, Getting an aeroplane, getting your bike on the aeroplane, and getting it there, getting it to Medellin, not the top of South America, is um, is a different thing altogether. Let me go around there. Good on you guys. So I, I think it was well worth it. I mean, I, it cost me two thousand dollars to get my bike only uh, from Buenos Aires to Miami. Uh, near enough to two thousand dollars, so I, I think it was worth it. Um, I had a really good time. A few, a couple of the couples didn't think it was. They didn't think the staff were very nice. The staff were. They're all volunteers except for Ludwig, who's the captain. Um, uh, yeah, I think we'd lost. Some. I think he might have even been ahead of us. Um, but anyway, um, they were all volunteers and that they've been on the boat for, I don't know whether it was three or six months already and this was their last trip. So they're a little bit wary. Um, you know, they, you know, I think they were over it, you know. But they were fine. I mean, you know, they were just a little bit short with everybody, you know. Uh, you know, kid, you've got to do this. Come here, help me with this, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I didn't think that was, that was that bad. Um, but there was little bits and pieces we had to pay for. I think we had to pay for our insurance as well. I oh, know, yeah, we had to pay our insurance as well on top of the 1200. So I got my insurance for two months in Colombia, and that was, I think, $70. Um, 
and yeah, there was a couple of other little fees we ended up having to pay, but I, I think it was it was pretty insignificant. So yeah, I, we stayed outside of. Uh, for, I stayed at this place for about a week, uh, and then I ended up staying at the. You can see this place coming up on the left hand side, which is uh, something of the Americas uh, Resort, uh, which was a pretty cool place. Um, but you know, the beaches here are, are just okay. They're not like Miami, not as not as beautiful as Miami. You know, the the this a bit more, not so much blue water, you know, um, but it's uh, it's pretty good. But the Star Rat is a, is, is a, an adventure in itself. And um, although we didn't have the adventure a lot of other people have where they stop off for nights and you can stay on islands, our, our uh, trip was a special trip for all the bikes to get across. And I was pretty lucky to get on there. And Ludwig is a bit of a character, but, um, you know, he does that all the time, you know. Uh, that's all he's doing all day, every day, so every week. And they do a couple of tri special trips every year to, I think to Cuba and places like that, maybe even further around the world. Um, I don't know if I'd be up for that, but uh, Cuba definitely. Um, but um, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a good time. You, you can sleep upstairs on the hammocks or the, the day beds. Um, they're not the day beds aren't comfortable. The hammocks are comfortable, um, and you just just cruise, just take your time. And we had a, I mean, we were flying. We had a tailwind, which Ludwig said was pretty rare, and um, we had a tailwind, and we also had the uh, had the um, uh, the 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 engine going as well for part of the second day. But we were cruise, you know, we were really flying. You know, um, and the, it was the seas weren't really rough, really. You know, they were fine, um, and so we, you know, we got there really, really quickly. We got there about half an hour earlier than what we normally would, so about twelve hours earlier. So that's because we had a good tailwind. Um, the the meals were were good. You know, the first the first meals were the, was the best meal, and after that the meals were just okay, but they were fine. You know, um, and you know everyone had duties to wash up, like everyone every every one of us had to have our turn at washing up and that. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, I I found it a really really great experience and one of the, one of the good memories of the trip. Um, met some really really great people. All everyone was interesting. You know, Marcus, you know, Marcus was a cr crazy sort of older guy. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if he still got a law firm or he was a lawyer. Uh, and he's travel. He travels the world just on his motorbike, and he goes back home for spirits. So he got here, and then he went back home for about three months. Went skiing in the Swiss Alps. Um, he was a pretty funny guy. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've met some good guys like Chris and Sam and and uh, Russell and um, yeah, Klaus. And we kept in touch on the trip. Mate, I, I think I did. I get this right? Yeah. Oh, he's already here. Sam, Sam already beat us there. So, um, yeah. So this was actually at night. We decided to go for a ride through the old town, and the cops pulled us over and said, "Hey, you're not allowed to do that." And then they said, uh, "And they, you know, you can get into trouble, you get fined." But they said, "Look, we'll take you through the old town and take you to the other side." So they escorted us uh, through. So we went for a bit of a ride around the old town um, of Cartagena at night, which is pretty cool. It was pretty slow though, but. Uh, we were the only motorbike bikers allowed in there, apart from the cops. Um, but uh, yeah, it took us on a little bit of a round tour. I don't know why a lot of our motorbikes, maybe probably because so many people have mopeds, they'd be worried about people getting hurt. But I mean, take up a lot less space than cars, and I, don't know, I suppose I can see the, the reason why they do it. I really, oh, sorry, I'm just getting tired, it's late at night. I really, really enjoyed uh, Cartagena and I stayed there for about two and a half weeks all up. Um, just relaxed and got everything ready and caught up with some friends and had a, had a really good time. It's a, it's, a, it's a great little city. Good food outs. If you if you eat inside the old, old town, you'll pay a lot more. But the locals who make all the food on the outside of town, that's where you eat. You only have to go a few steps outside and there's lots of cafes and stuff like that. 
buses allowed in Old Town. Um, but yeah, it's pretty touristy, the Old Town, but it's really, really pretty. And it's, it's, it's a really big place too. It's not like a little tiny little place as well. So we just sort of said our thanks to them, to the guys, and they just explained to us never to do that again. <laughs> But they were, they were pretty cool. So yeah, if, you, if you're going for, if you're going to do the Darien Gap, you've got a few choices. You go on the Star Rat, or there's a couple of other ships that do it. I think there's two or two others. Not as good, apparently. Um, or do a uh, fly your bike. And that's the only way. And there's Chris and Sam, we were walking through the old town. That's during the day. Really pretty as you can see. Lots of food and places to drink and lots of touristy stuff as well. That's a, that's a rush KGB bar, what a famous little bar in the old town. There's another restaurant. All really cool. But if you have any questions or comments about the Star Rat or, or, or the trip across, uh, just leave leave your comments below and I'll be happy to uh, to to, to, uh, to inform you of anything that I know. Um, and if I don't, I'll, I'll try to point you in the right direction. All right, guys, questions and comments below. Thank you.